and I'll slate that this is for the broadcast generic. So first question, what was your reaction when you were asked to reprise the role of Trevor? What made you want to bring him back to the big screen? Well, to put it very simply, uh, Kevin Feige came to my house. I live in Oxfordshire in England, and he flew over to present to me the idea of, of Trevor in the first place, and that introduction to him was so, um, so well put, so, so well thought through, and the, the initial character so well thought through and well created, and then the short film that Drew Pierce did afterwards when Trevor is in prison, it was, it was a marvelous opportunity to, to add more layers and, and, and see another aspect of him in his element as, a, as an actor doing a one-man show for people, um, dressed in his Shakespearean costume. It was, oh, a tremendous opportunity. I was absolutely delighted to, to, to revisit Trevor and, and to give him, give him a, another breath of life, as it were. Oh, really, really a wonderful opportunity. You have said that Trevor is an amazing adapter. Can you tell us why? Well, I think I, uh, not to go into too much of a backstory because the audience don't see that, but um, I think that there is a struggle in Trevor. I think that, that um, he is a great survivor and a great adapter because of, of perhaps something in his, in his childhood, perhaps his parenting, um, and, and certainly there is an element in, in the true actor of the chameleon, one that can empathize, transform, and adapt in order to tell a story. And I think that Trevor's uh, ability to tell a story and to adapt and to, and to empathize uh, is, is, is perhaps a tool for life that he didn't quite realize he had until he gets into that extraordinary environment of Tarlow uh, and that journey towards Tarlow where he's, he suddenly has an authority that perhaps he didn't realize he had in the first place. So um, it's a voyage, along with all, so many of the other cast members, it, it, it is also a voyage of, of self-discovery for, for Trevor too. Trevor brings so much humor and fun to the film. As an actor, how did you go about developing him as a fully rounded, relatable character? Well, um, I'm very flattered that you've described him as a fully rounded, uh, rela relatable character. He is based upon uh, actors and colleagues with whom I worked uh, in my early days as an actor. Uh, and I started my career quite considerably in the north of England. Uh, I'm very fond of the north of England. I didn't live very far from Liverpool. In fact, to travel to Liverpool, all we had to do is go along the East Lancashire Road, it was called in those days. It's probably called a motorway now with a number. Uh, but then it was the East Lanx Road, and it was so exotic to go, what, 20 miles from Manchester or Salford up to Liverpool, where uh, they, 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 they dwelt a tailor who made my father's suits and also, when I was an adolescent, made my first suit. So... Um, I have a fascination and a familiarity with the town of Liverpool. And I decided, and it was decided by dear Drew Pearce, that his origins were from the north of England. And, uh, and I, I, built, I built that into him and, and certain dear colleagues that I knew in my early days as an actor, their attitudes, their adventurous spirit, their wisdom, uh, and and uh, ability to quote Shakespeare at will. So he, he is a, a kaleidoscope, like a mosaic, an amalgam of lots of people of whom I'm very fond and, uh, and whom I met in my, in my early theater days before I was blessed uh, by the cinema and became a film actor. So I think that that, that, um, that contribution added that those contributions added to making him the character that he is. But I must say that on paper, on the page, he's a marvelous role to play. And there's very little improvisation in my performance. It is very much on the page. If it's not on the page, the actor can't deliver. But the basic, the basic building blocks, far more, practically every word I say in the film 
is on the page. So that's a great starting point. And um, what do you think about Trevor's costume for this film? Um, he he graduates from looking very much like a, 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 um, an Elizabethan Shakespearean actor to to um, to very simple village dress in Tarlow and then into a warrior's costume, the red costume. And that journey of costume totally reflected my journey in, uh, sorry, Trevor's journey, in that he starts off as a Shakespearean actor, he then travels as a, as a villager, as a wanderer, and then discovers in him something that might be that might be just at a pinch something of the warrior. So the costume I put on like a glove and it seemed utterly appropriate to what I was trying to do with Trevor. I was delighted. And tell us about Trevor's companion, Morris, and what it was like working with the CGI character. That CGI character came to life thanks to the rapport I had with the handler who was invariably at the end of a long pole but 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 I used to talk to him before the scene and and we used to build up certain moments where because I I react as an actor I love reacting so he would give me uh out you know right in the corner of my peripheral vision out of my eye line he would give me a lovely jump or a movement or a, or or a little scurry that would prompt me uh, in, to, to my to my next line of dialogue or my next gesture to to Morris, so that was a really nice relationship, and we had time to build that rapport because Destin ran such a wonderful set where everybody could seize their moment, confident that they would not be interrupted. And um, what did the director um, bring to the film? Well, listening to him today in the press conference and listen, and working with him as, as, a, as a man and a colleague, he brings many layers of his own compassion, sympathy, struggle, and wisdom to the film. A, a beautiful lyrical quest for the original self that emerges into the world before it's messed up. And I think Destin is in touch with that original self. We could call it the child within, but I don't want to infantilize what I'm saying. It's the original self, the journey of the soul. He's deeply intelligent, immensely likable, philosophical man, a man with whom I would go into battle, side by side, knowing that I was safe. And how would you describe the time you spent in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Sublime. There's your one word. <laughs> and um, final question, what can audiences expect when they see this movie? We have to give it away. We can't hold on. If we're holding on, if we express expectations, we're holding on. We can't do that. All we can say is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here you are. <laughs>